Ham International Concord Mark II, an iconic radio from the 1980s, 120 channel, multi-mode, very compact, uses the same chassis as many other sideband radios of that era. I picked this one up as working, so let's have a look at it, see what we can do to it, do some essential modifications, and then do some extra modifications. So a closer look at the front, the radio's not in too bad condition, a bit dirty, a few war wounds here and there. But apart from that, everything looks okay. Our case has been resprayed by the looks of it, not done too bad of a job. And the track side of the radio, doesn't look like there's any surprises in there. Everything looks original. Doesn't look like there's been any work done on it. So I think we've got a winner with this one. Again, the bottom has been resprayed. And we open it up and it looks totally original inside. It doesn't look like it's been messed with at all. And I can see straight away that there's been no modifications done, as in essential modifications. So let's do some tests, see how far away it is. So mid band, not too far away. High band, pretty much bang on. And super high band, a little bit low. But quite surprisingly that's not too bad so let's check the 10240 crystal and that's a little bit low check the 10695 and that's a little bit low as well now on to tp3 check lsb offset it's pretty close And now back on to TP5. And this should be 10.692. So it's not too bad. Let's check the waveform on the output. Using the two-tone. It doesn't look too bad at all. So, all in all, I think we've got a winner with this one. Well, let's check the bias on the final output. Of course, that's low. So we're going to be correcting that. And check the bias on the pre-drive, and that's a little bit low as well. So we will be correcting that as well. So let's do the bias so first off r44 needs to come out so we desoldered it from the other side and out comes r44 now r44 needs to be replaced with a 15 ohm resistor so we'll solder that 15 ohm resistor into place. Just like that. Now let's check the bias again. So we're at set point 0.75 volts. We need to set it to point 0.7. So we'll adjust RV2 on sideband with no modulation. And we'll get it to round about 0.7. There, it's close enough. Now the next one we need to do is R40 for the pre-drive. We need to change this to a 33 ohm resistor. So out with the original one. And in with a 33. So we'll check the bias in again, 0.75, big improvement. 
no adjustment for this one so we'll leave it at that now the next modification we need to do is to improve the audio limiter performance so we need to change R150 to a 5.6k ohm so we'll remove R150 and replace it with the 5.6k And last off, we add a 102 capacitor to the junction of R28 and C32 to ground to complete the audio limiter performance modifications. One, two. One, two, three. One, two, one, two. One, two, three. One, two, one, two. An audio sounds okay, received on another radio. So let's begin to strip this radio down to prepare it for some other modifications so the front's a bit dirty so we'll put that to one side deal with that later and there's our radio with the front off so for our modification we need to remove the RF gain now the RF gain has got the low power switch on it as well, so we want to be removing the low power facility. So we'll just check which sides of the switch are active when it's pulled out. And it goes down to this wire, and the other side of the switch goes to ground. So we can safely remove that wire and just place it to one side for the moment. And that's the low power disabled from the low power switch. So next thing we need to work on the RF gain. But before we do that, we can remove this little piece of circuitry that enables the low power as we don't need it anymore. And we can discard that. So we're going to be moving the RF gain to the high mid low switch. So we need to disassemble the high mid low band switch. Now the high mid low band switch has got two functions. It also switches the crystals, but it also changes the display to 41 to 80 and brings on the high light. So we need to try and preserve these. So one of the connections we've got 13 volts for the high light which connects to the the center wire there's a diode in there as well so we need to try and recreate this on a band switch and the other side those are the crystal wires for the actual bands and because this is a one two one chassis it's powered by a voltage and not switching the crystals through a switch So we just find the common, so there's the 9 volts and the other one. So it's just essentially applying 9 volts to one of these wires to enable the bands. So we can safely remove those and there they are going off to the crystal oscillator board. So I've made a note of which one's which. And disconnected them from the switch so we've got a little bit of a nest of wires popping up but this is what we're going to be using a five position two pole switch and that's going to be going in place of the RF gain so working in steps we've got the 41 to 80 working on high band selection We've got the highlight working, which will now indicate UKFM. So we'll do a quick test. So there's our mid band. And 
okay we've got part of it working so there's our RF gain out and we're left with three wires a center and two outer wires so we need to try and replicate a potentiometer on a switch so we've done that by some resistors and this seems to work okay so I've kind of copied it off the NATO 2000 resistor values and as you can see DX mid and local so that can go back into position as DX mid and local so we've now got a working RF gain of sorts so the next thing to pull out is the VCO so we'll desolder the VCO from the board using my desolder gun top earth connection is a little bit of a pain so you have to be patient with that but eventually the VCO comes out nothing wrong with this VCO but we want to be putting an expanded one in here's a VCO we're going to be using designed by myself if you want one of these please let me know they have various models available there it is there's the VCO in place we fitted a 10 microfarad capacitor on the back as some radios have this and some don't so we'll just do a, an initial setup of the VCO just so we can carry on working on the radio Now these voltages started going all over the place this was because there was no band attached to this because I hadn't finished the band switch yet it took me a few seconds to work out what was going on but as soon as I selected a band that was working the VCO locked again so that'll do for test until later when we do final alignment so that's some essential modifications done to this radio stay tuned for part two where we carry on and we finish off our band select so thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next episode